Access to space may seem like a three-dimensional chess game played only by billionaires today, but that is not the case. Innovative companies are creating amazing ways for small projects from private enterprise and universities to get their experiments into orbit. This is the dawn of a new age of affordable access to space. I would like to draw your attention to one of the most amazing of these companies today and look at this expanding opportunity in the space economy. you for a bright future in the space industry and we appreciate your feedback as it helps us to improve. The cost of space access is coming down rapidly. Before SpaceX restarted the space revolution, access to space was controlled by a few monopolies in the most powerful nations on Earth. In Russia, it was Roscosmos and in the United States, it was the United Launch Alliance. After the shutdown of the U.S. Space Shuttle, the only human access to space was Roscosmos, and it could cost hundreds of millions of dollars to get a payload into space. China and India were doing their best with limited resources, but when you only have a few launches a year, you don't have the time to concern yourself with a small university or company that has dreams of expanding its operations and experiments into space, but does not have at least tens of millions of dollars. Elon Musk learned this when he wanted to accomplish a small goal. The goal of Mr. Musk was simply to launch a small lander to Mars and allow a flower to bloom there as a statement to the world's major space powers that becoming a multi-planetary species is possible and necessary for the future of humanity. He called this project Mars Oasis. He quickly found that trying to purchase launch services in the United States meant dealing with a monopoly whose goal was not the advancement of humanity into space but to get the highest possible price for everything they did. If you don't turn a profit, you cannot stay in business. And the goal of a publicly owned company is the maximization of profits for the investors. But without competing companies, the taxpayers are cheated from getting their money's worth. Elon Musk discovered that it would cost hundreds of millions of dollars to get his project accomplished. Now he was not a poor man. He and his brother had come to Canada with almost nothing. There, Elon started working on his education at Queens College, later moving to Pennsylvania to finish a degree in physics and another in economics. He had started a small company that later merged into PayPal and had sold it for a nice profit, ending up with about $165 million. An unbelievable sum to most of us, but only a little more than half what it would cost to purchase a launch to Mars on the Delta IV Heavy built by United Launch Alliance. It was impossible. Elon then traveled to Russia to see about purchasing a decommissioned ICBM for this purpose. There, something wonderful happened. The Russian engineers saw Mr. Musk as a naive novice and actually spat on him. Why is this wonderful? Because they had ridiculed and angered someone who was willing to risk his wealth and comfortable life to accomplish something greater than himself. I know it is popular now to either see Elon Musk as an almost divine being or paint him as some kind of monster. He is neither of those things. He is one of those rare individuals whose intellect sees beyond his time. These people are usually miserable because the number of paths to humanity having a good future are few, while the number of paths leading to our complete destruction are almost infinite. But Elon Musk has one other quality. He cares, not in some sappy, hopeless way but in a much more productive determination to do everything he can to bring about the possibility of a better future for humanity. He decided to revolutionize access to space. He had not yet been taught all the things that rockets could not do, like landing after orbital flight. Because he had not limited his goals to what others thought could not be done, he was able to do it. Everyone knows the story now. He put everything he had into SpaceX and Tesla and was a few weeks from insolvency when he was able to get the Falcon 1 into orbit. After that came the Falcon 9 and the realization that the only viable path to space was through reusability. By making rockets reusable, the cost per flight comes down dramatically. Again, we all know the rest. ULA is only surviving because of political pressure from politicians who profit as taxpayer money flows to them through ULA. The Russian engineers who ridiculed Elon are now hoping to accomplish by 2026 
what Elon had accomplished more than a decade earlier in 2015, a reusable rocket. Ariane Space is still throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at building a completely non-reusable Ariane 6, while in rural Texas, SpaceX is about to throw a completely reusable Starship into the stratosphere. While Elon Musk is doing for very large payloads, other companies are trying to replicate for smaller payloads. The same year that Elon Musk landed the first Falcon 9 booster, students at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands were working very hard to launch a small rocket the university had spent years developing. The students wanted this rocket to beat the previous European student rocket record of 12.5 kilometers altitude. They spent a lot of time working on the project and were finally able to launch it. It didn't make the 50 kilometers they had hoped for, but it did almost double the old record, reaching an altitude of 21.5 kilometers. Everyone was happy with what they had achieved, but the students knew that their beautiful rocket that they had spent so much time on was gone forever. They couldn't refuel it and launch it again. This got some of them thinking. They did not have the resources to make something like a Falcon 9. But is there a way to get smaller CubeSats and experimental projects into space? This got them to thinking about small vehicles that have made it into space. The X-15 is a famous example. Carried aloft by a B-52 bomber and burning liquid oxygen for an oxidizer and anhydrous ammonia for fuel through the XLR-99 rocket engine. This seemed like a good approach, and other companies have liked this idea also. Virgin Galactic has a modified 747 called Cosmic Girl and plans to carry its Launcher 1 rocket to altitude and launch it into space. The first try failed, as they usually do, and another test is planned soon. The billionaire Paul Allen, one of the co-founders of Microsoft, had dreamed of building an air-launched space vehicle. He funded the world's largest airplane, this amazing aircraft built by scaled composites, seen here. It flew once. And then Mr. Allen died. The problem with having a visionary leader funding the future of humanity that is if they die, those with more venal aspirations take over. And the plane was landed. Forever. Strata launch was canceled, and all this hard work will gather dust in a museum somewhere. Just like Apollo. Which is why I think Elon Musk should be encased in titanium gold alloy body armor, which is enrolled in the bubble wrap and stored in an underground bunker. But I digress. The former students from Delft University did not have a B-52 bomber. In all fairness, who does? Or a 747 like Virgin Orbit. So they built this. This is the Dawn Aerospace Mark II Aurora. This is an innovative rocket-powered space plane that they are using to develop their concept. Unmanned aircraft have rapidly advanced to the point where they are the most cost-effective way to fly many payloads. Pilots are expensive and humans require a lot of support equipment. An unmanned space plane can take off from almost anywhere on Earth, rise above the Kármán line, and climb into space. The Mark II will be used by universities and small companies who need to test their equipment in the space environment or have an experiment that will only work in freefall. The Mark II can carry a small payload of about 3 CubeSat units to an altitude of about 113 kilometers and fall back, giving the payload about 180 seconds of zero gravity. They intend to do this at around $50,000 per flight. This price will allow even small universities and companies access to the space environment. But the Mark II is not the final goal. This is. This is the Mark III. At 18 meters long, it will be a two-stage vehicle that will climb above 100 kilometers. Then it will deploy the second stage, which will fire its engine and climb to low Earth orbit with a payload of up to 250 kilograms. This concept is complementary to the SpaceX Starship. The Starship will be so massive that getting a huge payload into orbit will be much more affordable, and the entire system is reusable. But you still won't be able to get SpaceX attention if you just have a microsatellite you want to put into low Earth orbit. Soon you will be able to talk to Dawn Aerospace and schedule your launch from almost any regular runway on Earth. Let's look at some of the innovative technology behind Dawn Aerospace and the Mark III. The Mark I was built and flown in 2018. It had regular air-breathing jet engines and was used to test the aircraft design itself. Once the Mark I design was proven, development was started on the Mark II. The Mark II is a true rocket plane. It uses RP-1 and hydrogen peroxide for fuel and oxidizer. It has an electric turbopump and does not need a carrier aircraft. 
It flies itself straight into space after taking off horizontally from a runway. If all goes well, the Mark III will be much bigger. At 18 meters, it will be almost three times larger than the X-15. The added fuel allows the Mark III space plane to fly from a runway to space and deploy its payload. Dawn Aerospace can also help you with your satellite propulsion systems. They have developed innovative propylene and nitrous oxide based 3D printed rocket engines with integrated reaction control systems. These products are listed on their website with the cost clearly disclosed. This is a very nice difference from so many companies that respond to the question, how much is it, by saying, how much do you have? They have developed 0.5 Newton, 1 Newton, 10 Newton, and 20 Newton systems to accommodate the needs of any CubeSat or SmallSat developer. Some of these are actually deployed in orbit as we speak. If you've been wondering how to have a chance to succeed in space, take a look at this company. No one can be an expert on everything. It is usually best to try to know a little bit about everything and everything about a small sector of knowledge that is useful to your customer. Focus your enterprise on an area that is being neglected by the massive companies and do it better than anyone else can. We are finally entering an era where startups have a chance and anyone alive today can hope to find a place on the last frontier. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and support us on Patreon if you can. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Hang in there and stay safe.